Hello everyone, welcome to Open Instruction. Today we will talk about control system basics. Let's dive in. So what is the definition of control system? Let me give you a short definition now. Later, I will give you an elaborate definition. In short, control system is the mechanism that alters the future behavior or state of a system. Control systems are an integral part of modern society. Numerous applications are all around us. Some of the automatically controlled systems are the rocket fire and the space shuttle lifts off to Earth orbit. In splashing cooling water, a metallic part is automatically machined. A self-guided vehicle delivering materials to workstations in an aerospace assembly plant glides along the floor seeking its destination. These are just few examples of automatically controlled systems that we can create. We are not the only creators of automatically controlled systems. These systems also exist in nature. Within our own bodies are numerous control systems such as the pancreas which regulates our blood sugar. In the time of fight or flight, our adrenaline increases along with our heart rate causing more oxygen to be delivered to our cells. Our eyes follow a moving object to keep it in view. Our hands grasp the object and place it precisely at a predetermined location. So basically, this world is full of systems. Whatever we see around us are the different types of systems. If we like to represent a system in terms of a block diagram, the input will go in the system and the output will come out of the system. Now, the mathematics that determines the control mechanism of a system is called control theory. So we can say control theory is the strategy to select appropriate input. Control theory helps us to change the system's input in such a way so that we can get desired or expected value at the system's or plant's output. Now, what is the desired objective of a control system? The objective of any control system is to ensure stability as well as the degree of stability. Now you may ask, what is the degree of stability? If you design a machine for a certain time, that machine should be in stable state for that specific period. In other words, that machine should work fine without any interruption. For example, if you design a mobile phone for 5 years, that mobile phone should give you the proper output with optimum level for that certain time period. Now, let's talk about the design steps of a control system. There are 6 design steps of a control system and those are number one identification of the problem that is transforming requirement into a physical system number two proper representation number three creating schematics number four mathematical modeling number five solution technique for example reducing the block diagram and the final step is analyze and design depending on input output classification a system can be four types Number 1. Single input single output CISO system. Number 2. Single input multiple output SIMO system. Number 3. Multiple input single output MISO system. And number 4. Multiple input multiple output MIMO system. To solve a system, we need the help of mathematical equations. There are mainly three types of mathematical equations, and those are algebraic equation, differential equation, and finally, integral equation. Now, depending on the properties of systems, systems can be classified as linear and non-linear system, time variant and time invariant system. If a system's output changes with time is called a time varying system. For example, AC system. On the other hand, if a system's output does not change with time is called a time invariant system. For instance, DC system is a time invariant system. And the final one is deterministic and random system. If a system's output can be determined beforehand, that is called a deterministic system. Suppose series of odd number is a deterministic system. On the other hand, the outcome of a coin toss is a random system. Let's talk about the properties of a linear system. 
A linear system has two properties. Number one is the superposition property and the number two is the homogeneous property. According to superposition property, if you perform an arithmetic operation with the input samples, the same arithmetic operation will be translated to the corresponding output samples. For example, if you add two input samples V1 and V2, the output Y1 and Y2 will also be added. According to homogeneous property, if the input, also called the excitation, is multiplied by a constant, then the output, also called the response, is also multiplied by the same constant. For example, if you multiply the input V by a scale factor B, the output Y will also be multiplied by the same scale factor B. Now, the input output curve of a linear system is a straight line plot which is y equal mx plus b. For our case, input is v and the output is y. We also assumed that the intercept is zero. As a control system enthusiast, we are mainly interested in developing the input output relation of the following systems, and those are thermal system, fluid system, electrical system, biological system, mechanical system, and finally the economical system. Now I like to give you an elaborate definition of a control system. A control system consists of subsystems and processes or plants assembled for the purpose of obtaining a desired output with desired performance given a specified input. Let's look at a control system in its simplest form. Here input represents the desired response which is our expected output the output is the actual response, which is what we will actually get as an output from the system. Control is basically concerned with finding technically, environmentally, and commercially feasible way of acting on a technological system to control its output to desired values while ensuring a desired level of performance. For example, consider an elevator. When the fourth floor button is pressed on the ground floor, the elevator rises to the fourth floor with a speed and floor leveling accuracy designed for passengers' comfort. The performance of the elevator can be seen from the elevator response curve in figure 3. The push of the fourth floor button is an input that represents our desired output shown as a step function in the figure. Two major measures of performance are apparent. Number one is the transient response and the number two is the steady state error. In our example, passengers comfort and passengers patience are dependent upon the transient response. If this response is too fast, passengers comfort is sacrificed. If too slow, passengers patience is sacrificed. The steady state error is another important performance specification since passengers safety and convenience would be sacrificed if the elevator did not properly level. This is all for today. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, queries or suggestions, please don't hesitate to comment below. And oh, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.